plight of a mouse has stirred up a range war in Colorado. <laughs> Depending on whom you talk to, the Preble's jumping mouse is either a canary in the coal mine or the next spotted owl. When we see this miner's canary or miner's mouse dying, uh, we know that it's time to slow down and look more carefully at the way we treat our landscapes. The spotted owl was used to shut down timber harvesting in the Pacific Northwest. This will shut down economic development and growth on the front range of Colorado and Wyoming. Eight years ago, the federal government listed the Preble's jumping mouse as an endangered species. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is supposed to make such decisions based on the best available science. But in the case of the Preble's mouse, the science has been hard to pin down. Unfortunately, the best available science is like chasing ghosts because it changes all the time. We find out other ways to test. We find out uh, other ways to go out and look for some of these animals and plants. And so there never really is going to be a finite answer to the question. And it's always going to be a bone of contention between groups that would like to list everything and people that would like hardly anything to be listed. Three years ago, property rights advocates filed a lawsuit to take the mouse off the list. Their case was bolstered by research concluding the mouse was really just a common species from South Dakota that had snuck into Colorado. But one biologist, and then others, have challenged those findings. There was really strong separation of the mice by genotype, by the type of mice it was in terms of the genotype in Colorado and in South Dakota. Translation, the Preble's mouse is not a South Dakota mouse. Its ancestors were jumping around in Colorado at the end of the last ice age. What we're dealing with are antiques, uh, wonderful old reminders of a time not so far in the distant past. They say the Preble's mouse is like the pygmy shrew and the Canadian lynx, leftovers from a wetter and colder time. These relic species live in a kind of evolutionary cul-de-sac, unconnected to other populations of their kind. You're okay. If the mouse remains an endangered species, developers here will have to preserve mouse habitat before they can build. One bedroom community on the front range has opted out of the mouse war. The town of Superior decided to stop growing and start saving habitat. The property in between the flat irons and where we stand here is all open space because Boulder County and the city of Boulder had the foresight in the 60s to purchase that and preserve that property. The Rock Creek housing development takes up two thirds of the city's land. 4,000 homes have been built here since 1990. Karen Ambirowitz led the effort to buy a 30 acre parcel on the edge of town. The creek runs right through the property and we're very happy that we had the chance to purchase it and preserve it for all of time. The price tag for this prime piece of mouse habitat was $2.7 million. Voters approved a tax and a bond issue to pay for it. We see all sorts of wildlife come along, Coal Creek and Rock Creek, um, even bears sometimes. Connecting wildlife sanctuaries with public money is one conservation strategy. And using the Endangered Species Act to stop development before it destroys wildlife habitat is another. And that's the approach now being tested in Colorado. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has convened a panel of experts to look at conflicting research on the mouse. Whatever the decision, advocates on both sides in this issue say the loser will almost certainly sue the government and the mouse war will go on. For Assignment Earth, I'm Gary Stryker.